Hello Internet, this is Jussi from Ember Falls. I play the drums in that band. And in addition to drumming, I also partake in the songwriting and lyric writing quite a bit. And the album closer from our album Ruins called Absent Children uh, was originally one of my demos. And one of the driving ideas behind that song was to have a, a couple of kind of central rhythmic or melodic themes that are reused throughout the song. And I thought it might be interesting to some of you uh, that I break down some of those kind of basic themes and how they are reused in different parts of the song. So um, here we go, I guess. So um, this intro introduces two of the kind of basic elements uh, that are reused throughout the song. So the first one is the main rhythm guitar thing. And the other one is the main melody. Verse continues with the same guitar rhythm here. Intro comes back with the melody. Second verse is similar, a little bit more chords going on, a little bit of variation in the in the chords and so on. And then the chorus. Um, the chorus was actually the last part that we came up with, so that's why it probably doesn't have as much kind of explicit connection to other parts of the song, because it was the last thing that we kind of figured out, so it, it's kind of a standalone piece compared to the other parts. Now if you listen to this melody here, So that vocal melody was actually introduced earlier in the song, but it's kind of uh, uh, in the background. So if you listen to the piano part here, let's solo that track. So that's the same wouldn't you rather tasting kind of uh, previewed before the vocals bring it in after the first chorus. So here we have a bunch of things coming back. So obviously the orchestra and synth are kind of doing a variation on the main theme. This one. But then also, if you listen to the rhythm, this is basically the same as ta da which was the original rhythm here. But it's just simpler. So, kind of the main rhythm brought back, but in a simpler form. And here, right before the blast beat, uh, whatever section happens, uh, you hear the main rhythm come back again, the thing. This section is actually probably my favorite from the song. Uh, blast beat and clean vocals are just an unbeatable combination. And this one was definitely influenced by uh, a Swedish band called Opeth. They have this song called The Lotus Eater, uh, which has a really killer chorus with uh, blast beats and, and clean vocals on. So that was the influence there. Uh, but here even, like, if you listen to the uh, guitar melody, so this is on top of the blast beat thing. So the idea here was to make the rhythm similar to the main rhythm. So if you imagine like that, like a tr -t -tr -t -tr -t -tr -t -tr that that was the idea to kind of have the same kind of thing come to mind, even though it's it's different. But that was the intention. 
And at the end of end of this part, you get the main rhythm once again before the second chorus. Once again, the chorus doesn't have really uh, many common themes with the rest of the song because it was the last part to be invented out of thin air. Um, and here, this synth, this synth uh, sound was actually in the beginning of the song at first, but we moved it around. And here we change keys, so it's the main theme, but we lift up the key three semitones to E minor from C sharp minor. And we call this the Nightwish modulation because one, Nightwish does it a lot, and secondly, it's just a very powerful and epic effect when you do it that way. This melody and lyric again, obviously. So we're still in E minor here now. So I don't know if anyone will actually get that this was an intended thing, but if you listen to the rhythm here, the so if you speed up, like slowly, it doesn't really sound like anything familiar. But if you double the speed, it actually it actually becomes so the idea here was to have the the intro rhythm brought back but it's at half speed so i don't know if anyone actually gets that but whatever that was the explicit intention behind that rhythm choice Obviously the same wouldn't you rather lyric here. One thing that I'm sure everyone will miss, because it's not really that prominent in the mix, is uh, the guitar overdub lead in, in this kind of evil section, which goes like this. So that was actually intended as a variation of the main guitar theme from the very beginning of the song. Oh, not that one. That's the rhythm. This one. So the intention here was to have this be a variation of the intro theme in this evil section. Now we modulate back to C sharp minor. Two reasons. One, it sounds evil. And the second one is we need to get back to the original key to get back into the original verse, which comes now. So we're back in the original key and we can go straight into the verse again. The phone fell for some reason. And back to E minor. If you want to learn something about effective key changes, modulate three half steps up, then down, and then back up. We do the exact same thing in We Are Become Fire a couple of times, and it's always so epic and powerful when you do that. So that's my music theory lesson for you guys. And the reason why this chorus sounds so much more powerful and epic the last time around is simply that it's now in E minor, which is a lot higher than the C sharp minor previously. This rhythm here, I don't know if you remember. Uh, not this one, uh, it's this guy. Okay. So this was the simplified main rhythm and it's brought back here.
And also, if you listen to the orchestra here, main theme variation again. And this outro is probably a fairly obvious uh, reprise. So this is actually the evil section brought back with the chorus chord, so it sounds a lot more kind of, I don't know, blissful or whatever. Uh, so the rhythm is the same, da -ga -da 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 -ga -da, and there's the same orchestra arpeggios going on here. So if you compare this guy to... Same orchestra things here, same rhythm. Going back here. Also the child voices that we recorded and pitch shifted ourselves are the kind of same in both of these sections. So these ones. If you listen back to this evil part, they sound kind of silly when you bring them up in the mix, but they, they work well when they're back down there. Back here again. This obviously also has the uh, melody from the chorus, this guitar melody. Oops. Uh, from here. Where the hell is it? <laughs> so this is the original C sharp chorus. back here so this final part was in the, intended as a kind of epic outro that kind of ties everything back together so you have a hint of the main rhythm or the half speed thing and then you have the evil section themes like the rhythms and the orchestra arpeggios going on and then parts of the chorus and so on so that was the idea uh, I don't know how, how pretentious this sounds but I, personally I find it fun to try to kind of slide in the same theme from one part of the song to another it's just fun plus it's easier if you can use fewer themes you don't have to come up with a lot of different themes you can just come up with like three and then just make variations on those and everything's happy and and uh, we're all gonna make it and so on yeah uh, that was absent children I don't know if I missed any parts uh, I don't know if anything made sense but uh, that was kind of a breakdown of, of the different kind of themes that we tried to reuse when constructing the final version of the song and I think it turned out pretty good in the end so uh, hope you had a fun time listening and watching to my ramblings and uh, I don't know the standard things subscribe to our uh, social media, blah, blah, blah. Uh, I'm Yulsi from Ember Falls and uh, see you guys later.